Hi everyone. Welcome to the annotation example for the fall of the house of Usher. So when we're annotating the fall of the house of Usher, our areas of focus are the elements of Gothic literature that you should have already looked at. Those elements, just to remind you, are bleak setting, tortured characters, strange or violent plot, dramatic description, gloomy mood, and recurring symbolism. Now, as you're reading, you might find some other things out of this list of Gothic literary elements to annotate. For example, you may find examples of figurative language that you will want to note or other elements that we've looked at previously this semester. So feel free to mark that, questions that you may have, reactions that you may have, vocabulary that you may not be sure of, stuff like that. So you're not limited to the elements of Gothic literature. That's just what your focus is going to be for this particular piece. So we're gonna do about a page and maybe a paragraph from the next page. And we're going to try to look for those elements. There are a lot um, in this story, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult to keep up. Um, so I may be pausing the recording a little bit so that we can try to make notes of everything. Um, as I've previously mentioned on these annotation tutorials, nobody's annotation will look identical. Um, you should have some of the same things as I do, um, but you may have more or slightly less, just so long as you're basically on the right track with um, what I am picking out. We want you to make sure that you're getting the major stuff that you should be. That's why we're doing these examples. So let's go ahead and begin and um, see what we can find for those elements of Gothic literature. Son cœur est en lutte suspendue, sitôt qu'on la touche il raison. During the whole of a dull, dark, and soundless day in the autumn of the year, when the clouds hung oppressively low in the heavens, I had been passing alone on horseback through a singularly dreary tract of country, and at length found myself, as the shades of evening drew on, within view of the melancholy house of Usher. Okay, I'm already going to pause because I'm already finding stuff that I want to mention and focus on. The first thing is some of the diction that is being used, such as oppressively low in the heavens and the dreary tract of country, really helps to um, create this gloomy mood. The connotations from these words and the, the diction of these words help to create that mood, which is one of our elements of Gothic literature. Um, it's also a very dramatic description, um, and that's one of our elements as well. So I'm going to also add to this dramatic description. And again, I believe that all of that is created through the diction, um, the word choice that the author is making. Okay, um, the other thing is that we can tell that there's this character. I don't know, I don't have anything yet to tell me he's a tortured character, but I do see that um, he's mentioning this melancholy house of Usher. So this house already is coming just to the forefront of my mind. Like what's the significance here? that I hope to find. He's on horseback, which also helps me to understand the setting a bit, um, and maybe possibly the time frame, which is part of setting. So I'm just gonna make a note of that as well, and let's continue and see what else we find. I know not how it was, but with the first glimpse of the building, a sense of insufferable gloom pervaded my spirit. I say insufferable, for the feeling was unrelieved by any of that half-pleasurable because poetic sentiment with which the mind usually receives even the sternest natural images of the desolate or terrible. I looked upon the scene before me, upon the mere house and the simple landscape features of the domain, upon the bleak walls, upon the vacant eye-like windows, upon a few rank sedges, and upon a few white trunks of decayed trees, 
with an utter depression of soul, which I can compare to no earthly sensation more properly than to the after-dream of the reveler upon opium, the bitter lapse into everyday life, the hideous dropping off of the veil. So again, I mentioned there's so much in Poe's writing that it's almost hard to keep up, but there's a lot going on here. So let's see if you caught some of it. First of all, we got the bleak setting that's in here um, that we also got a little bit up at the top. But the mere house, the simple landscape features of the domain, the bleak walls upon the vacant eye-like window. So you've got some figurative language with a simile, a few rank sedges, a um, few white trunks of decayed trees. So this is all imagery, um, very descriptive, and which is also one of our elements of Gothic literature. And then he says an utter depression of soul, um, which also leads me to think that perhaps he is a tortured character. Um, I'd like to find out more about him, but it's saying that he's got this depression of soul just by seeing this setting. Um, and then you've got a metaphor um, that he compares to the after dream of the reveler upon opium. So we've got figurative language in here as well. Um, let's see, symbolism. I'm still wondering about this house because of the description that's being given. Um, so I'm wondering if there's more to this house. I'm suspicious of that. We'll find out more. That's the way we track symbolism though, as we think that we see this object as it's repeating. And there's so much attention given to this description of the house, which makes me think that it's going to have some significance later. Um, we don't know anything too much about the plot yet, so, uh, but we do have a, you know, a gloomy mood, a bleak setting, possibly some symbolism, um, and definitely dramatic descriptions. We've got a lot of the elements of Gothic literature. So let's go a little bit more here. Again, it's chock full of stuff. There was an iciness, a sinking, a sickening of the heart an unredeemed dreariness of thought, which no goading of the imagination could torture into aught of the sublime. What was it, I paused to think, what was it that so unnerved me in the contemplation of the House of Usher? It was a mystery all insoluble, nor could I grapple with the shadowy fancies that crowded upon me as I pondered. I was forced to fall back upon the unsatisfactory conclusion that while beyond doubt there are combinations of very simple natural objects which have the power of thus affecting us, still the analysis of this power lies among considerations beyond our depth. It was possible, I reflected, that a mere different arrangement of the particulars of the scene, of the details of the picture, would be sufficient to modify or perhaps to annihilate its capacity for sorrowful impression. And acting upon this idea, I reined my horse to the precipitous brink of a black and lurid tarn that lay in unruffled luster by the dwelling, and gazed down, but with a shudder even more thrilling than before, upon the remodeled and inverted images of the grey sedge, and the ghastly tree stems, and the vacant and eye-like windows. Okay, so that was a big chunk. Let's go back to this page over here. Um, so I've just noticed, and this isn't necessarily, uh, or it's not an element of Gothic literature, but we have the character that is reflecting to himself. So that's sort of his inner dialogue, and that helps us to understand this character that we don't know too much about yet. Um, but he's trying to ask himself, what is it about this house that has this effect on him? Which leads me again to, you know, wonder or question that this house has something more to it than just a simple house. Um, and so that's why I noted here up at the top that the character feels that there's more to the house. So symbolic, perhaps, that we will get to a little bit later. Um, and then in the rest of this, I really looked at some of the diction once again. Um, the word annihilate on its own, the connotation connected to that, um, really just describes this sort of gloomy mood and also has this dramatic description to it to annihilate something, that word choice. 
Um, he reined his horse on the brink of a black and lurid tarn. So the word choice here or the diction per helps to create that gloomy mood once again. Also helps to describe this bleak setting where the colors are all gray as it's mentioned here. The inverted images, the ghastly tree stems help all to create this bleak setting um, full of grays and blacks and these dark images. Once again, you have the eye-like windows, um, a simile um, comparing the windows as eyes to the house. Um, so the house again, you know, being personified at, possibly as a symbol. And all of these words also, you know, that help to create this bleak setting also create this dramatic description um, and create this gloomy mood. So they all really do go hand in hand. Um, dramatic description. So it's really a dramatic description of the bleak setting. So they're all related. Um, and so I have some suspicion about the symbolism. Uh, there's definitely um, discussion of bleak setting and examples of that. Um, we, I suspect that this character may be tortured partially by what he's seeing of this house. Um, we definitely have a dramatic description and a gloomy mood. So we have to wait and see what strange or violent plot is going to emerge. Um, it's a little bit strange to begin with because he's riding by himself on a horse in sort of a, an, an abandoned or um, unpopulated area happens upon this house and this house has such a, an impact on him. Um, so that kind of let, you know leads into um, a strange plot, nothing really violent, nothing violent has happened yet, if there's going to be, but um, things are a little bit strange. It's not rainbows and sunshine and birds flying around. So. Um, that's how it sort of set the scene for the story. Um, throughout this whole story, you'll continue to find lots of elements of Gothic literary, um, literary elements. Um, but just continue annotating. Again, you can go beyond our gloomy, um, or our Gothic literary elements. Um, and we will, um, look forward to seeing your annotations uploaded, uh, as soon as you're done. Good luck. Have fun.